Mouse joystick is an interesting input style. It is only for touchpads and gyrometers, and it allows the user to interact with the input source as if it were the mouse input style, such as swiping, dragging, and rotating. But the output is that of an X input joystick. As the description box states, this style is best used when the player still wants to operate the input source as a mouse, but cannot actually bind the mouse input style, like in games that don't support simultaneous mouse and controller support. It also states that this is the next best option to the mouse input style. So technically this is a workaround for troublesome games, but that doesn't mean it can't be just as good. However, there are some things you should know. First, this style has to translate swipes and dragging motions into joystick output. And second, every game handles joystick input differently. Between the need for translation layer and the fact that no one setup will work for every game, the mouse joystick is a difficult style to set up for most users. So let's do what we do here and break down each setting to see how they all tweak this input style. On the main page for touchpads, we find a very familiar set of options. Aside from the sensitivity vertical scale, these are the exact same options found on the mouse input style's main page. The first setting on the left is click action. This is a touchpad only setting and allows the user to bind an action for clicking in the touchpad. There really isn't any negative aspect to assigning a binding here since joystick control is always activated by touch with this input style. The uses for this setting are limitless, but a cool binding would be to put zoom or aim down sights here, replicating Halo's right stick click. Some other useful bindings for this spot are reload, melee, or interact. Sensitivity is actually grayed out and replaced with the text Adjust Sensitivity in Game. As it states, Steam input does not manipulate the sensitivity of joystick output, it must be done in game. This helps a little bit since we don't need to worry about juggling multiple sensitivity sliders like we did with the mouse input style. Rotation deals with the way that your thumb slides across the touchpad. Grab your controller and put your thumb on the furthest left point of the touchpad and then slide it to the right. I bet that the Y axis point of your thumb has changed. I know my thumb rises up a bit when I make this motion. This is what rotation compensates for. It rotates the X and Y axis of the touchpad so that your natural thumb movement can always be read as even. By default, this is set to have a minor Y axis increase from left to right, which fits well with the Steam controller for many users but isn't great for the DualShock Force touch bar which my thumb easily stays level at. Fortunately, there is a graphic when moving the slider so tweaking this to one's personal preference is relatively simple. Rotation works on the gyro as well and is set to X equals zero or level with the ground by default. Sensitivity vertical scale alters the vertical axis sensitivity without changing the horizontal. At 50%, both axes are given the same sensitivity. Moving the slider to the left decreases the vertical sensitivity and moving it to the right will increase the vertical sensitivity. This setting is mostly designed with shooters in mind. Reducing the vertical sensitivity will help keep your aim level while turning corners or looking around. This is great for games that feature very little vertical aiming or level design. Trackball mode, a touchpad exclusive setting, gives the output momentum in a manner that reflects hardware trackballs. Swiping one's thumb and then lifting it off of the touchpad will cause the output to continuously travel in that direction even after the thumb has been lifted. The momentum is based on how fast the user moved their thumb. The next setting, trackball friction, determines how quickly the output slows down after the thumb has been removed from the touchpad. When set to off, the output will be as if trackball mode were disabled. Low friction will have the output continuing for a long period of time after the thumb has been removed, high friction will quickly slow the output to a stop, and none will cause the output to move forever stopping only when the user puts their thumb down on the touchpad again. Friction vertical scale changes the ratio between how the trackball friction affects the vertical and horizontal axes. The default 50% has both axes slowing down equally. Reducing it causes the vertical axis to have a lower friction, continuing to move even after the horizontal axis of movement has stopped. Increasing this causes the vertical axis to stop moving before the horizontal axis has stopped. 
The main use of this setting is to bump it up so that the trackball movement favors left to right movement which helps keep the camera level in FPS games. This allows for quickly turning 180 degrees without having to adjust the aiming height. This setting can help compensate for the small surface area of the touch pads as it allows for continuous output even when you have to lift your thumb from the pad. However, it doesn't provide that one-to-one -one control that some users will want out of their input device. Invert vertical axis changes the vertical movement output. When turned off, moving your thumb up sends an up input. When turned on, moving your thumb up will send a down input. This is a setting that is mostly used for FPS games or games with aircrafts. Inverted aiming is a common setting in games like these, so just make sure the in-game setting isn't conflicting with this setting in the Steam Input Configurator. The gyro has some unique settings on the main page. First is Gyro Enable button, a setting that dictates when the gyro is activated. This option can be set to always on, or to any button on the controller. If you want your gyro control to always be available, then you'll set this to always on. But if you want it to be disabled sometimes, then set this to one of the controller buttons. If you set a button, then next you'll need to configure the gyro button behavior, which determines what the gyro enable button does. The default is set to on, which will enable the gyro control only when your gyro enable button is held. Turning this to off means that your gyro control will always be active unless you are holding the gyro enable button. And the final option, toggle, will use the gyro enable button to toggle the activation of your gyro control. Gyro camera scale changes the gyro sensitivity against the touchpad sensitivity if both input sources are set to the mouse joystick input style. This is typically used in games where aiming is a core mechanic. You'll set both the touchpad and the gyro to mouse joystick and then you'll adjust the gyro camera scale down so that the gyro will have a lower sensitivity than the touchpad. You can then use the touchpad for wide aiming and the gyro for fine aiming. Despite not stating this in the description, the bar can be viewed as a percentage of the touchpad sensitivity. So 100% or all the way to the right is equal with the touchpad and moving it to the left will reduce the gyro sensitivity. And the final setting on the main page is gyro lean binding. This allows the user to set bindings for tilting the gyro along the x-axis. One binding for tilting left and one for right. While these bindings can be used for any action, the terminology definitely lends itself to place digital lean bindings here, such as how leaning is handled in Crisis or Rainbow Six Siege. A small side note, if the gyro steering axis is changed from yaw to roll, then these lean bindings will be activated by rotating the controller rather than tilting it. And as usual, I'll be skipping mode shifting and haptics as they are large enough sections to warrant their own videos. Moving on to the additional settings, the entire left column is dedicated to overriding any acceleration, dead zones, or response curves that are programmed into the game. And because of that, we'll need to go over some terminology so this section makes sense. A joystick outputs a range of values across two axes, which we'll call X and Y for this exercise. The value range for X input joysticks is negative 32,768 through 32,768, with a center joystick having a value of 0, 0. So when you push a joystick all the way up, you are actually sending a Y input value of 32,768 to the game, and all the way down is a Y input value of negative 32,768. The same goes for the X axis. A dead zone basically ignores smaller values. So a hypothetical dead zone of 16,000, half of the maximum value, would mean that the game wouldn't react to any joystick movement near the middle and would only start moving the camera when the joystick was pushed past the halfway point between the center and the edge. Response curves change the output value based on input values. A one-to-one -one curve is linear. Whatever value you input is the same that the game sees. A relaxed curve bends down, reducing the values that are inputted, while an aggressive curve bends up increasing the values that are entered. These can help make a joystick feel more accurate, but for this input style, we really want a one-to-one -one output. So let's get to the actual settings. 
Minimum joystick output value is a way to eliminate dead zone. This setting changes the lowest output value that the touchpad or gyro will have regardless of how little you move your thumb or the controller. So if the game's dead zone ignores values of 0 to 1000, you can set this to ensure that even the smallest of input is still read by the game as at least 1001. Unfortunately, there isn't any way to directly input numbers like this, so trial and error is the only way to fine tune this setting. The setting is split into the X and Y values. Some games use unique dead zones for each axis, and some don't, so sometimes these will be set to the same value, and sometimes they'll be different. Unlike many other settings that are subjective, this one actually has a specific value that you'll want to make the output feel exactly like the mouse input style. If it is too high, then even small input will have a huge output, and too low will mean that the smaller inputs won't be registered at all. Enhanced small movement precision is a way to further increase the accuracy of small movements. Since the minimum joystick output value is bumping up all small movement to the same value, we need a way to help differentiate between those smaller movements. Just like with minimum joystick output value, this is a more objective setting that requires a specific value. If this is too high, then you can have output even without input. If it's too low, then some of the smaller input could be ignored entirely. Custom Response Curve allows the user to compensate for a game's input curve. As the description states, this should be a last resort. When this setting is in the middle of the bar, it is a 1 to 1 ratio. Moving to the right will apply a more aggressive curve, used to negate a relaxed one, and moving to the left will apply a more relaxed curve, used to negate an aggressive one. This setting has a graphic to let you know just how steep of a curve you are applying. Invert horizontal axis simply switches left and right movement. So rotating your controller left would move the cursor right, or sliding your thumb across the pad to the right would cause your character to look left. Invert horizontal axis isn't anywhere near as popular as invert vertical axis, but I'm sure there are some uses for it. Double tap binding allows the user to input an action when tapping the touchpad twice. Double tap duration sets the length of time that this double tap window is open. Reducing the setting will require the taps be done rapidly, while increasing it will allow for slower taps. And double tap beep will have the controller beep whenever the double tap binding is activated. I've heard that many people like to put reload, interact, or melee on this button for FPS titles. Trigger press mouse dampening is a setting that reduces the sensitivity whenever a trigger is pulled. This can be set to just the left, just the right, or both triggers, and can also be set to only activate on soft pulls or on both soft and full pulls. The slider underneath the drop down box, which also says trigger press mouse dampening but should read trigger dampening amount, controls how far the sensitivity drops when the trigger is pressed. The default is 90%, which means that you'll lose 90% of your sensitivity. This is a great way to combat any camera jitters or unwanted output that happens whenever you pull the trigger. I don't really get this with the touchpad, but pulling the trigger does cause my controller to move a bit, which affects gyro aiming. Another use for this is to reduce the dampening amount to around 50% and have it activate with your aiming button so that you can reduce your sensitivity while sniping. Edge Spin is a touchpad only setting that provides a continuous movement option, sort of like a joystick. When the Edge Spin is activated, the joystick output will continue to move in that direction until the user deactivates the Edge Spin. If we imagine a circle inside of the touchpad, moving our thumb outside of the circle will activate the Edge Spin. Edge Spin Radius changes the size of the circle. Moving the slider to the left makes it smaller, while moving it to the right makes it larger. And edge spin speed determines how fast the cursor moves while edge spin is activated. Setting this to 0% actually disables edge spin, and moving it to the right will increase how fast the output movement is. For the most part, this setting was intended for controlling a camera, since it will grant the user continuous turning without having to lift their thumb. Minimum movement threshold sort of fills the role of dead zone for this input style. 
It sets a movement threshold, ignoring any movement that doesn't pass it. So accidentally moving your thumb a bit or moving the controller a small amount while adjusting your arms won't send input to the game. If the in-game camera is jittery or shaky when you aren't actively manipulating the touchpad or gyro, then increase this a little bit to remove those unwanted input. On the gyro side of things, gyro steering axis determines if the horizontal output is determined by rotating your controller or rolling it. As I stated earlier, the setting also affects the gyro lean bindings. Your lean bindings and horizontal aiming will always be on opposite axes. This is a subjective setting, but I personally find yaw, or rotating, to be the most natural. And gyro lean point, which determines how far the controller must be moved before the gyro lean bindings will be activated. The default 9.1% value requires that the controller be rotated about 20 degrees before the binding will activate. If this is too much movement, then move the slider to the left, and if you are activating it too easily, then move it to the right. And that's the mouse joystick input style. Despite sharing many settings with the mouse input style, this is still seen as a rather difficult style to work with, and most of that stems from the fact that no single config will work for more than one game. Hopefully, by breaking down all these settings, especially this stuff and the additional settings, it has made the style a little more approachable, which leads to more people feeling comfortable enough to mess with these settings. And just like using any other part of Steam input, Creating anti-dead zones and messing with response curves is intimidating now, but it does get easier with practice.